Let's say you needed to code on your work computer, but it's in the office and you're not there, or it's a desktop. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could access it remotely via another computer or even on an iPad. Let's take a look. Before we jump into our video, I want to go ahead and tell you that we have a brand new LinkedIn page for VS Code. So go ahead and follow us there for some original articles for content that you won't find on YouTube and then some additional insights on our video. And now back to our scheduled program. I've always wanted to say that. When you're accessing a computer located at work, also referred to as your remote host from a different computer like at home, which would be your remote client, it's something you want to do safely, especially if it's the computer at the company you work to access their resources. With VS Code, we can do this via a process called remote tunneling using VS Code remote tunnels, and you can find some more details here on it. Tunneling is a networking concept that involves creating a secure and direct connection between two separate networks or devices. And creating a tunnel allows data to be transmitted privately across different networks or the internet. With VS Code tunnels, you can effectively eliminate the need for source code to be on your client machine because the extension runs commands and other extensions directly on the remote machine. And this approach is possible because of the VS Code server. To get started, let me go ahead and open the folder where my project directory is, dev remote tunnel code. And here I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called test UI where we'll do our demonstration. And now I'm gonna to go to Copilot and ask it to create a simple short HTML page for me. That looks good, so I'll go to the ellipses and tell it to add it into a new file. And I will save this as index.html. And this is the file that we're going to be using to access from a client computer. The next step you'll want to take is to install the VS Code Remote Tunnels, go to the account image, and turn on Remote Tunnel Access. And at the very top, you'll get two options, and you'll want to select turn on for this session, unless you want it to run whenever you're logged in, but that's not the case for me. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the first. And if you're not logged into GitHub, you'll want to log in. It already says that I'm signed in, but I'll just select this. The bottom right hand corner, you see that it's starting the remote tunnel session. Okay, perfect. And now I get prompted to click the browser link to this clipboard. And with this link that I have, this is what I could use to go to a client computer, paste it, and then access my current computer that we're looking at right now. So with this very link, I'm going to text that to myself and access it, in this case, with my iPad. And when we return, we'll see that we could modify code from the iPad and it will update it on this host computer that we're currently on. What you see now is my iPad on your right hand side and the code that we have on the left hand side. So I'm mirroring my iPad right now onto my computer. I'm going to go ahead and launch Edge and I'm going to paste in the URL that we had. Once I paste it in, it's going to bring us to the online version of VS Code. And within seconds, boom, we could see Test UI. Now it's asking me which type of account that I use to log in. I'm going to choose GitHub and click Allow at this prompt here so that it could use GitHub to log in. And I'll sign in with my credentials. I need to use an authenticator app. So I'm looking at that on my phone to put that in. You wouldn't have to go through all this unless you're in a corporate environment also. And from here, I'll click continue and choose authorize with Microsoft. And now at the bottom right hand corner, you could see that it says it's connecting to my computer. And here we are. We see our index.html file. On the left hand side, you could see the title on line seven is simple HTML. But let me go ahead and zoom in with the iPad. Now, when I try to modify, it asks me, do I trust the authors? I'll say yes. And I'm gonna come over here and change this to modified HTML page. 
And as you can see in a VS Code, this has been modified, which is pretty cool. So essentially I can code and make any changes that I want on my iPad and we will see the changes reflected here. And likewise, if I were to change this to reverted, you can see on the iPad, it also was modified to reverted. There's one more thing I'd like to show you, and that is accessing a virtual machine that I have set up here. I'll go ahead and launch it. I can just as easily come to Edge here, and I will paste the URL to my remote machine. And again, it prompts me to select how I logged on. I'll choose GitHub again, because I use my GitHub account. I'll sign in, enter my authentication code, continue, authorize with Microsoft, indicate that I trust the author to edit the file. And there we have it, our code. And this time you can see, just like how we left it, reverted HTML. Again, just modify it bring up VS Code, you can see the changes are made. Some simple changes here just to keep things easy to understand, but this could certainly be well used for larger projects, even if you need to debug and do some more advanced changes, all from pretty much any type of client that can run a web browser. And that's it. I hope this video helped you understand how to securely connect to remote resources now that you do know some of the basics about tunneling and how to set it up. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you've ever even used tunneling before this. I'd be interested to know. That's it for now, and I will see you in the next one.